welcome to my latest case, Secret of the Scarlet Hand. Just Dear Dad, greetings from the new deputy curator at Beecho Museum in Washington, D.C. I miss you, by the way. How's Africa? I sure hope this letter reaches you in Ouagadougou before you move on to Nairobi. So I got the internship. Your old friend Franklin Rose was awfully nice to submit my name to the rest of the members of the museum's board of directors. What an opportunity while I'm in between cases. As you probably know, the museum specializes in ancient Maya culture. My supervisor is going to be Joanna Riggs, a well-known archaeologist. Maybe you've seen her name in the news recently, in conjunction with the discovery of a strange Maya monolith. Apparently, it's created quite a buzz among experts in the field. Well, Beach Hill plans to feature the monolith in an upcoming exhibition. Just imagine, this artifact has been buried for hundreds of years, and now it's going to be unveiled to the public for the first time. The museum is short-staffed at the moment, and they're expecting such a huge turnout that they've closed their doors to prepare. I can hardly wait to dig into this exciting project and learn how archaeologists and historians solve the mysteries of ancient cultures. I'll keep you posted. Love, Nancy. Nancy Drew, I presume. I'm Joanna Riggs. Welcome to Beach Hill. I was just checking the lock on this display case. This is one of the museum's most treasured pieces, a carving of King Pakal. Who is King Pakal? Pakal assumed the throne at age 12. Can you imagine? That was 615 AD. He ruled for 68 years at the height of the Maya civilization. Is that jade? Yes, the Maya loved jade and used it for many of their carvings. There isn't another piece like this in the world, and it's priceless, which means I practically had to sell my own grandmother to get it. How did the museum acquire it? Leave it to Taylor Sinclair. He's a wizard when it comes to these deals. You'll meet him later. Now then, Nancy, you're coming on board at a critical time for Beach Hill. An exhibit of this caliber is not kid stuff. Franklin Rose assures me you're a real trooper, and I hope he's right, because I'm not here to babysit. I don't care who your father is. I'm glad to be here. Please, tell me more about the exhibit. In addition to our permanent collection, we're borrowing rare pieces from museums and private collectors around the world. Soon we'll be sitting on the most fabulous collection of Maya artifacts ever assembled in one place. And now that we've scored the monolith, too, Beach Hill Sora Numero Uno. This monolith, it's an important discovery? Yes, a hot young team of archaeologists, Americans and Mexicans both, dug it out of a cave near Palenque. Every curator from here to Siberia was trying to get a hold of it, but I'm the one who closed the deal. Why do you mention the nationalities of the archaeologists? Because in archaeology, everyone wants to be king of the sandbox. I became a curator because I want to help make artifacts available to as many people as possible. That's all that matters, isn't it? Unless you're Alejandro Del Rio. What does this monolith look like? It's a massive pillar of stone, nearly 1,500 years old, with Maya glyphs carved into it. We've installed it in the garden. Wait until you see it. How do you know it's 1,500 years old? According to Henrik, the monolith was made at the special request of King Pakal himself, but we don't know what its purpose was. Who's Henrik? Henrik van der Heun, world-renowned expert in Maya hieroglyphics. He's the latest addition to the Beach Hill Brain Trust. I told him I don't even want to see his pointy van der head till he's got a translation on that monolith. Do you think the glyphs hold an important message? I really don't know. The Maya were at their peak during Pakal's reign. After he died, things began to go downhill. The civilization never regained the oomph it had under its most extraordinary king. What was the key to Pakal's success? If the message on that monolith is from King Pakal himself, it might give us a clue. Credit for a discovery like that can only spell one thing, my dear. R-E-V-E-N-U-E. -E. Anyway, there's a list of tasks for you in the lab. Once you've knocked those off, we'll regroup. Shouldn't I have more training? Don't worry, you'll be in the swing of things soon enough. Go ahead and take a look around the museum. I'm sure you'll find the monolith, Mui and Terrasante. Or just roll up your sleeves and hit the lab. Thanks for the orientation, Joanna. I'll talk to you later. Bye!
It's locked. The Maya ball game was a religious activity. You must be Nancy, the new deputy curator. I'm Henrik Vanderhune. Pleased to meet you. What are you working on? Just some light housekeeping. Why are you wearing that mask? Oh, these dusty old artifacts are murder on my allergies. <clears throat> anyway, what can I do for you? I'm curious about your work. How do you go about translating a glyph anyway? It can be a complicated process, involving research, piecing lots of different elements together, and a healthy dose of guesswork. So there isn't a definitive dictionary of Maya glyphs where you can look things up? Oh, I'm afraid not. You see, glyphs are so intricate and full of subtleties that multiple meanings may be embedded in a single glyph. So three distinct-looking glyphs may all translate to mean sunshine, roughly, but with different nuances. There is so much we still don't know. Lucky for me, I guess, or I'd be out of a job. Joanna turned me loose without too many instructions. Do you have any advice for me? Well, as you've probably heard, the museum is closed in preparation for the exhibit, so you'll have free run of the place. Please explore. The sooner you get to know your way around, the better. Think of the lab as your home base, your center of communications. Anyone who wants to get in touch with you will leave a note or a voicemail here, so check in often. I'm very busy with my work, so you're going to have to be pretty independent, but I suspect you wouldn't have it any other way. See you around, Henrik. That will be fine. I need to find another piece.
This side looks damaged. Nancy Drew, or should I say, Detective Drew. I'm Sinclair. Who told you I was a detective? I was at a meeting with the BOD recently, and I caught wind of your appointment and your credentials. Very impressive, if I do say so myself. Well, I'm not on a case right now, that's for sure. I'm the new deputy curator, remember? So, how's this for a specimen? Ever seen a million dollars worth of rock before? Do diamonds count? Ouch. Well, they did say you were sharp. Seriously, though, thank goodness you're here. I'm afraid the museum may be in terrible jeopardy. Oh, no. Is there something I can do? Joanna told me to butt out, but I'm so fond of Beach Hill, I just hate to see it fall prey to scoundrels. What scoundrels? It's a sensitive subject. Meet me in my office later and I'll explain everything then. You've got me worried. Can't we talk now? Just meet me later. 707 Bing Cherry Boulevard. I've got to go. Enjoy your first day at Beach Hill. I need to find a temple key card. coming along. I'm not sure what to do with those shards of pottery in the lab. Henrik can help you with that. I can't seem to find the addenda to the monolith loan agreement that I'm supposed to bring to Alejandro Del Rio. Check with Henrik on that. I'm not sure what to do with those exhibit narrations. Henrik can help you with that. When did Henrik come on board? I got an email from him one day saying he heard the news about Beach Hill getting the monolith. He said he'd drop everything to come here and translate those glyphs. He was even willing to take a pay cut. What could I say except, giddy up, you're hired. Where was he working before? At the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center in New Mexico. I've got work to do. Bye. Greetings. I can't seem to find the addenda to the monolith loan agreement that I'm supposed to bring to Alejandro Del Rio. Sunny June bobbed around this place like an untethered balloon. Who knows where he left those documents? You'll just have to hunt them down. And FYI, Senor Del Rio has been extremely touchy about this monolith loan, so try not to keep him waiting. I'm not sure how to go about rearranging those exhibit narrations. It's really quite simple. Check out the Convomatic Auto Narrator in Shipping and Receiving. You'll need some headphones. First determine which of the exhibits in the main hall could rightly be called Exhibit A. Change Exhibit A's narration number until you're seeing what you're hearing, or hearing what you're seeing, and it's all downhill from there. I'm not sure what to do with those shards of pottery Joanna left for me. Play around with those pieces until you've reconstructed the pot they once were. There may be a few extraneous pieces. Likewise, you may find yourself on a scavenger hunt for a piece or two, if I know Sunny June. Did you know the deputy curator who was here before me? Hurricane Sunny? I'm afraid I did. If he wasn't losing paperwork or setting off the fire alarm, 
He was cornering our visitors with his theory that the Maya were abducted by aliens. I'm afraid you'll be cleaning up his messes for a while. What is the Spectro X Archeo Analyzer for? It's used for identifying chemical compounds that are found on artifacts, traces of ink, blood, charcoal, and other substances. The beauty of the machine is that it can collect these traces without damaging the artifact in any way. But it cost us a fortune, so don't fiddle with it unless you get Joanna's permission. See you around, Henrik. Will do. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. Strange supernatural creatures, sometimes called monsters, played an important role in Maya mythology. These monsters were often associated with the earth, caves, or mountains. The bicephalic monster, Maya scribes record. It's about time! Oh, my fears are like maggots infesting my poor old carcass! Want a cookie? They're from Oaxaca. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm trying to cut back. Now, what's going on? The art world is being ransacked, Nancy. Prudence Rutherford, a major patron of the arts, had her fire ruby necklace stolen from her villa in Topeka. Two weeks later, a whole display case full of rare Maya artifacts was heisted from a museum in New Mexico. Do you think there's a connection between the two thefts? Who knows? I'm just telling you, this community, our friends and colleagues, my people are being systematically trounced by thugs! Who's to say Beach Hill won't be next? You've got to do something! Does Joanna share your concerns? I've urged Joanna to approach the board about making some security upgrades, but she just keeps saying that the timing isn't right to ask for money. I understand your concern, but what can I do to help? We need your eagle eyes. We need your bat ears. We need you to sniff out the stink of trouble. I appreciate the vote of confidence, but I'm just a detective, you know. I'm not bionic. Don't play modest mouse with me. Modest mouse? <laughs> Most people call me Nosy Parker. But anyway, tell me something about the art business. Is that a contemporary painting? You bet your socks it is. Would you believe I dug it up in my backyard? No, but I could humor you. I guess that would make the painting a genuine artifact. How about that rubber shark? The artist's name is Poppy Dada. She's a teenager in South Dakota. The art world is going bananas over her stuff. I'll unload that one for some serious dinero. Is Poppy Dada her real name? I don't know. I'd better get going. Bye now. Good thing Franklin gave me the museum key.
You have no... I do not understand that function. You have... You have no voicemail. Press 9 for an outside line. Silvio's Curatorial Bonanza. May I speak to Silvio Jr., please? This is Silvio Jr. What can I do for you? Are you still having a sale on packing supplies? That's right. 30% off on bubble wrap, foam peanuts, heavy-duty tape, medium and large boxes, sticky labels, and why supplies last, of course. Have you ordered from us before? Well, I haven't personally, but the museum has. Okay, good. That saves me a lot of paperwork. What's the account number? BH-119-K. BH-119... BH-119-K? Beach Hill? Are you serious? That's right. I'm the new deputy curator, Nancy Drew. Well, whoop-dee-doo, it's Nancy Drew. But Silvio's curatorial bonanza no longer does business with Beach Hill. I've sent all six of the outstanding invoices to a collection agency. And you jokers won't get another packing peanut out of Silvio Jr. ever. Do not call here again. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. May I speak to Franklin Rose, please? Who may I say is calling? This is Nancy Drew. Just a minute, please. Nancy, great to hear from you. How's the internship treating you? Are Joanna and Henrik showing you the ropes? So far, so good, I think. There's a lot of work to do before we launch this exhibit, but somehow we'll pull it off. Glad to hear you're settling in. I'm off to a meeting, but feel free to call me if you have any questions. I'm sure everything's going to be smooth sailing, Mr. Rose. Bye, kiddo.
Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, three captives wear garments associated with bloodletting. A variety of instruments, including stingray spines, thorns, Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas of the world. Ham radios are often the only means of contacting the outside world. Ham is an acronym for Handheld Amateur Radio. Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas of the world. Ham radios are often the only... The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local kahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the right as a captured lord kneels at his feet. The kahal holds a broken umbrella, a gesture typical of a supplicating captive. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local kahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the right as a captured lord kneels at his feet. The kahal holds a broken umbrella, a gesture typical of a supplicating captive. The Maya kings were often in... The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam, and the twins of sacrificial dance, Chak Shibsh Chak, and the baby Jack. The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam, and the twins of sacrificial dance, Chak Shibsh Chak, and the baby jaguar. The Maya were particularly fascinated with twins. In addition to a Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas of the world. Archaeologists work in some of the most remote. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, three captives wear garments associated with bloodletting. A variety of instruments, including stingray spines, Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas of the world. Ham radios are often the only means of contacting the outside world. Ham is an acronym for Handheld Amateur Radio. Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas of the world. Ham radios are often the only means of contacting The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local kahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the right as a captured lord kneels at his feet. The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam, and the twins of sacrificial dance, Chak Shib Chak, and the In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costumes, the Maya shaped their bodies to heighten their beauty. 
Beads were dangled in front of infants' faces to encourage crossed eyes, a trait considered attractive to the Maya. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costumes, the Maya shaped their bodies to heighten their beauty. Beads were dangled in front of infants' faces to encourage Strange, supernatural creatures, sometimes called monsters, played an important role in Maya mythology. These monsters were... Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but... The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. Chak was the god of rain. Ishel, goddess Ceramic bowls, such as the one featured in this exhibit, may have been used as vessels for burnt offerings of incense or corn. This bowl was either dedicated to or used to supplicate the god of war, Balak. Ceramic bowls, such as the... Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well known, it is difficult to determine the range of Maya influence. Some experts believe the Maya may have traveled as far south as the Amazon and as far north as North America. Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well known, it is difficult to determine the range of Maya influence. Some experts believe the Maya may have traveled as far south as the Amazon and as far north as North America. It's locked. It's locked. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Here is an example of the numbers from 0 to 19, from top left to bottom right. Notice how some numbers are represented with bars and dots, I am Lord Pakal, ruler of the mighty kingdom of Palenque. All those who come before me. Lady Zack Cook ruled Palenque before her son ascended the throne in 615 CE. Maya tradition required that the kingship be handed The date on this slab uses the Tzolkin, or divine calendar, made up of 20 weeks each with a named day and 13 weeks each with a numerical day. The two types of weeks progress into... The Maya ball game was a religious activity as well as a spectator. Strange supernatural creature. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of. I am Lord Pakal. Lady Zack Cook ruled Palenque. The Maya were pantheistic, believing in. Ceramic bowls, such as the one featured. Archaeologists work in some of the most remote. Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well. The Maya used different methods to represent. Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but very little is known about daily life. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and... The Maya ball game was a religious activity. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, three... The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam, 
The date on this slab uses the Tzolkin or divine. Strange supernatural creatures sometimes. Strange supernatural creatures sometimes called monsters played an important role in my In addition to adorning themselves with jewels, the Maya ball game was a religious ritualized bloodletting was a common. The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the head. The date on this slab uses the Tzolkin or divine calendar made up of 20 weeks each with a named day and 13 weeks each with a numerical day. The two types of weeks progress independently of each other. The date on this slab uses the strange supernatural creatures sometimes. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local Cajals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the right as a captured lord kneels at his feet. The Cajal holds a broken umbrella, a gesture typical of a supplicating captive. I am Lord Pakal. Lady Zack Cook ruled Palenque before her The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods. Ceramic bowls such as the one featured. Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas. Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well Archaeologists work in some of the Ritualized bloodletting. The four miniature gods clinging to the vi The date on this slide. Strange super- The Maya kings- I am Lord Pakal. Lady Zack Cook. The Maya were pantheist- Ceramic bowls. Although the geographic range of Maya- The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. The date on this slab, the four miniature gods clinging to ritualized blood. The Maya ball game was a religion. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costume. Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well known, it is difficult to determine the range of Maya. The Maya used different methods to represent
Maya Scribes recorded the official history. Interesting. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Here is an example of the numbers from 0 to 19, from top left to bottom right. Notice how some numbers are represented with Archaeologists work in some of the most In addition to adorning themselves with jewels, the Maya ball game was a religious activity as well as a spectator sport. Players would propel. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, three captives wear garments associated with bloodletting. A variety of instruments, including stingray spines, thorns, and bones. Ritualize. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local kahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the right as a captured lord kneels at his feet. The kahal holds a broken umbrella, a gesture typical of a supplicating captive. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with lo The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local kahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to...
The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balaam, and the twins of sacrificial dance, Chak Shibj Chak, and the baby jaguar. The Maya were particularly Ceramic bowls, such as the one featured in this exhibit, may have been used as vessels for burnt offerings of incense or corn. This bowl was either dedicated... Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well known, the Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but very little is known about daily life in the Maya world. Although there are thousands of inscriptions found on artifacts and architecture, The Maya ball game was a religious activity as well as a spectator sport. The date on this slab uses the Tzolkin, or divine calendar, made up of 20 weeks each with a named day and 13 weeks each with a numerical day. Strange, supernatural creatures, sometimes called monsters, played an important role in Maya mythology. These monsters were often associated with the Earth, I am Lord Pakal. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Here is an example. Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well known, it is difficult to determine the range. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costumes, the Maya shaped their bodies to heighten their beauty. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local kahals. Here, bird jaguars. The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. Chak was the god of rain. Lady Zak Cook ruled Palenque before her son ascended the throne in 615 CE. Maya tradition required that the kingship The date on this slab uses the Tzolkin, or divine calendar, made up of 20 weeks each with a named day and 13 weeks each with a numerical day. The two types of weeks progress independently of each other.
ceramic bowls such as the one featured in Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but very little is. Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, three captives wear garments associated with bloodletting. A variety of instruments, including stingray spines, thorns, and bone awls were employed for this activity. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, three captives wear garments associated with bloodletting. A variety of instruments, including stingray spines, thorns, and bone awls, were employed for this activity. The Maya used different methods. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, the Maya used different methods to represent. There, that looks like it's in order. I haven't fit I didn't finish it yet. I'd better check to see if I'm done with that. I better deliver this to Alejandro right away. I don't think he'll be there at this hour.
How may I help you? Hi, I'm Nancy Drew, the new deputy curator over at Beach Hill. So, you're Joanna Riggs' newest pirate in training. How does it feel to join the ranks with the modern-day conquistadors? I beg your pardon, but how does a deputy curator become a pirate in your book? You had better brush up on your history, young lady. When the Spanish explorers invaded Mexico, they became known as the conquistadors, or conquerors. They robbed the indigenous peoples of their wealth, not just their gold, but their artwork, their sacred objects. Anything they did not steal, they burned to the ground. Alejandro, I understand that many crimes were committed in the name of exploration, but that was hundreds of years ago. What does this have to do with Beach Hill? There is more. In the 19th century, archaeologists discovered the ruins of ancient civilizations predating even the Aztecs. Many of the dig sites were robbed, and the stolen artifacts were sold off to art museums and collectors around the world. Today, finally, it is illegal among most civilized nations to remove an artifact from its native country. But sadly, there are thousands of precious antiquities with highly questionable provenance floating around the Western world. But Joanna only wants to display this artwork, to celebrate it, so the public will be able to enjoy it and learn about your people's great talents and achievements. If the American public wants to see our art, they should come to Mexico. What do you mean by questionable provenance? An artifact's provenance is the story of its origin and ownership. For example, how it made its way from a temple at Chichen Itza to a museum in Washington, D.C. If the artifact's provenance reveals that it has been stolen, then that artifact must be returned to the country of its origin. Then the relics at Beach Hill must all be legitimate, right? No. Not at all. Provenance documents are often tampered with or forged to cover up the theft. Because of this, thefts continue and a great deal of art is moved on the black market, even today. Unethical art dealers and greedy museum curators do nothing to stop this. Are you suggesting Beach Hill is involved in these kinds of misdealings? If Joanna Riggs or that overstuffed pillowhead Sinclair had any decency, they would take measures to see that all Maya artifacts were returned to Mexico at once where they belong. And what if these measures are not taken? My country will have its due, Nancy, even if I have to begin reclaiming its artifacts with my own two hands. I see. Well, I should probably get going. Here are the changes to the loan agreement for the monolith. I just need your signature, please. I guess I should give him the contract. Thank you. I have some business with Joanna at the museum later, so I will return the contract to her then, after I have looked it over. Are you sure? I don't mind waiting. You may consider your mission accomplished. Well, uh, okay then. Goodbye. Coming along. Do you think Alejandro would go to extreme measures like stealing to reclaim Mexico's artifacts? Who knows? I've got work to do. See you around. I'd better check to see if I'm done with that. Nancy, the police are on their way.
I should talk to Joanna before I touch anything. Someone has cooked up my worst nightmare and served it to me on a plate. I'm sorry about the theft, Joanna. It must be a terrible loss for the museum. That's the understatement of the year. Did the police find any clues around the display case? The police took some samples for the crime lab, but they couldn't promise any overnight results. So if you want to put your little magnifying glass up to the scene, it's fine with me. Great. I'll let you know if I find anything. Go to it. There, now I can start putting this together. That's done. I'd better check to see if I'm done with that. It's a fiasco, just as I feared. Oh, I'm sick, sick, sick about the whole thing. Yes, your fears seem to have been quite visionary. I was in the museum when it happened. Have you spoken to the police? I told them everything I know. I mean, I coughed up my brains right there on the table. So, do you think this is linked to the thefts in Topeka and New Mexico? That awful red hand was left on Prudence Rutherford's jewelry box in Topeka and on the display case in the museum in New Mexico. What's the chance they're not connected? Do you know Prudence Rutherford personally? Oh, we saw each other at functions now and then. Poor Prudence. She adored that necklace. What's the name of the museum in New Mexico? The Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. They had a beautiful collection up there, worth a bundle, too. I appraised some pieces for them a few years back. Why do you think the thief is leaving this red handprint? To be a gruesome scoundrel?
Alejandro says you're unethical, a modern-day conquistador, that you're robbing Mexico of its cultural history. <laughs> and I say Alejandro is the real bully of the playground, a lunch money extortionist who loves nothing more than to see the other boys and girls go hungry. When you sell a piece of art, what kind of commission do you get? Standard, 10%. It's no king's ransom, unless, of course, you sell something for a million bucks. Too bad I'm not allowed to put that monolith on the market, huh? Joanna says you performed an act of wizardry in helping Beach Hill acquire the Pakal carving. Getting those provenance docks together was a pig and a half. Oh, they're on the up and up, I assure you. But ah, to have been at the height of my career back before the crackdown, those were the days. What crackdown? Maybe sometime I'll tell you a sad story I call How Mexico Lost Its Sense of Humor. Not today, though, Nancy. I'd better get going. Bye now. Hello, Nancy. Why did Mexico choose to lend the monolith to Beach Hill and not some other museum? Johanna Riggs outbid everyone. I had no idea a small museum like Beach Hill could afford such an expensive arrangement. Do you know much about Maya glyphs? You've caught me there. I know Spanish, English, Portuguese, and several indigenous languages, including Quiche and Nahuatl, but I have yet to learn the language of glyphs. Have you heard? The Bacal carving was stolen from the museum. Well, I heard the alarms going off, but it wasn't until Henry called me that I heard the news. You don't sound very concerned about all of this. I was running late. I just figured somebody tripped a wire and I kept going. I'll need to alert the police so they can ask you some questions. I have diplomatic immunity, so I do not have to answer any questions. But I will because I have nothing to hide. Don't you care about the disappearance of such a rare Maya artifact? That artifact was lost to me as soon as he'd left Mexican soil. So my friend Pakal goes underground for a while until he is sold again. Suddenly, he turns up in Amsterdam or Hong Kong. Unless he is rightfully repatriated to Mexico, what's the difference? Do you consider Henrik a conquistador, along with Joanna Riggs and Sinclair? Henrik is a student of my culture and my heritage. I'm not trying to buy and sell it. We don't agree on everything, especially not baseball. But I have nothing against him. I should get back to the museum. Yes, you should. Come in. Need something? Have you seen Henrik? I found a piece of paper inside the Pakal display case. It had some glyphs on it and a print of a red hand. I'm hoping he can give me a translation. What am I, fish food? Henrik's not the only one around here who can read a glyph, you know. Okay, great. Did you happen to see the thief's message? The police showed me the note. It said, the magician suffers yellow death, whatever that means. Apparently, the thief just couldn't come up with the glyphs for the curator suffers flaming purple disgrace. Can you explain how you want me to reorder that Maya numbering exhibit? Check with Henrik on that. I haven't seen Henrik since the theft. Where do you think he could be? Who knows? Need something? Apparently, a Topeka woman named Prudence Rutherford has recently been visited by a red-handed thief, too. Do you have any idea how I might get in touch with her? Afraid I can't help you there. I'm curious about the red handprint the thief left. Does it have any significance in Maya culture? Afraid I can't help you there. What I want to know is what the hand was printed with. It's obviously not finger paint. Why don't you do a little analysis on it in the lab? I've got work to do. See you around.
The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. Ceramic bowls, such as the one featured in this exhibit, may have been used as Although the geographic range of Maya cities is
I need a disc. I need a disc. I need a disc. Want a cookie? Thanks, but I'm trying to cut back. Any news? The Bacall Thief's glyph message translates to, The magician suffers yellow death. What in the world do you think that means? You've got me there. I'd better get going. Keep up the good work.
Looks right. It's locked. Need something? I've got work to do. Go to it. taken a real nosedive off that pyramid. Do you think he just fell, Nancy? Or was he pushed? Sounds like you need to find out about hospital visiting hours. Yeah, but you'd better get the lowdown from Joanna first. George is right. She is your supervisor, after all. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? I'd like to speak to Franklin Rose, please. I'm sorry, but Mr. Rose is out of the office. 
Would you like to try back later? Sure. Thank you for calling Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. First the Bacall carving is stolen, and now my star glyph man bumps his head and forgets his own name? What's next, Nancy? Del Rio pulls the plug on the monolith, the board clams up on my funding, my mother posts my old prom pictures on the internet? We do seem to be on shaky footing, don't we? What I need from you right now is action, not commentary, Nancy. Will you follow up with the hospital and see if there's anything we can do to get Henrik's marbles back? I'll call right away. You can also pick up Henrik's mail if he gets any. Keep the lab in order and just try to help me keep the entire museum from going up in smoke. I've got work to do. Carpe diem. Nancy, hi. It's Franklin Rose. I'm calling because it's just... This theft is very bad news for the museum. You can't imagine the limb we went out on to acquire that Pakal carving. It's been one of the museum's main attractions. Um... I don't want to take you away from your internship, but if you can do a little investigating, well... I think I speak for the whole board when I say we'd be very grateful. Give me a call when you have a chance. And Nancy, thanks. This message is for Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. This is Nurse Bluefoot calling from Eleanor Roosevelt Memorial Hospital in regards to Henrik Vanderhune. I believe you're a colleague of his. Since Mr. Vanderhune was admitted, he has repeated your name several times in states of semi-consciousness. As we've been unable to contact any of his family members, we're hoping you might be willing to act as Henrik's support person as he begins the difficult process of restoring his memory. Please call me as soon as possible to discuss this. My direct line is 202-555-4000. Thank you. To replay messages, press... Okay, I've got a graph of the chemical used for the handprint. Now I've got to match it up with a known substance. That's it! I should take the handprint with me. According to this chart, HG stands for mercury. S stands for sulfur. So the handprint was made from mercury and sulfur.
you have... I do not understand. Need something? I did the chemical analysis you suggested. That red hand was printed with a compound containing mercury and sulfur. Does that mean anything to you? Sure, sure, cinnabar. The Maya would rub it into their most important carvings to add definition to the artist's lines. Where would a person get a supply of cinnabar? We use cinnabar here at the museum the same way the Maya did, to keep things as authentic as possible. Henrik orders those kinds of supplies, but we've been out of stock for quite a while. The last I heard, there was some kind of holdup with the distributor. I've got work to do. Go to it. compound of mercury and sulfur? Mercuric sulfide? Oh, we sure do. How much do you need? Uh, first things first. What account's this for? Well, the account number is BHOOHP, but I'm not sure if we need any. Well, hello there, Beach Hill. Hey, you're not Sunny June. Whatever happened to that guy? I suppose he caught a ride on a flying saucer, eh? <laughs> what a riot. Uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, you don't need to reorder, do you? Unless you ate last week's shipment for breakfast, that is. You're sure it was last week? Oh, that's what it says here. Do you know who placed that order? Well, the initials on the order are J.R. So there hasn't been a holdup at the distributor or anything like that? Hold up? Oh, I don't know where you heard that. We've got enough mercuric sulfide in-house to sink a ship. Was the package shipped to the museum? Uh... Oh? Oops, I guess we didn't ship it at all. It looks like the package was picked up here at the warehouse. Can you remember anything about the person who picked up the package? Hmm. Uh, I sure can't. Guess I must have been at lunch or something. Well, thanks for your help. Sure thing. I hope there wasn't any problem with the stuff, was there? We only used a top-grade mercuric sulfide. Problem? Uh, not that I could hold you responsible for. Well, you sound a little green in the chemicals department, if you don't mind my saying so. I hope you know that mercuric sulfide is highly toxic. Makes you crazy. Toxic? Oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, looks like I've got another call coming in here. You give us a call in about four months or so when you start to run out, okie doke? And don't forget to keep it real. You have 
Bravo. Nancy, hi. It's Franklin Rose. I'm calling because it's just... This theft is very bad news for the museum. You can't imagine the limb we went out on to acquire that Pakal carving. It's been one of the museum's main attractions. Um, I don't want to take you away from your internship, but if you can do a little investigating, well, I think I speak for the whole board when I say we'd be very grateful. Give me a call when you have a chance. And Nancy, thanks. This message is for Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. This is Nurse Bluefoot calling from Eleanor Roosevelt Memorial Hospital in regards to Henrik Vanderhune. I believe you're a colleague of his. Since Mr. Vanderhune was admitted, he has repeated your name several times in states of semi consciousness. As we've been unable to contact any of his family members, we're hoping you might be willing to act as Henrik's support person as he begins the difficult process of restoring his memory. Please call me as soon as possible to discuss this. My direct line is 202-555-4000. Thank you. To replay messages, press zero. This is Nurse Bluefoot. I'm calling in regard to a recently admitted patient, a uh, Henrik Vanderhune. Mm, patient information is confidential. Are you a family member? No, I'm a colleague of Henrik's. Nancy Drew is my name. Nancy Drew? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I'm so relieved. We've been unable to locate any family members, and we do like amnesia patients to have at least one personal support person when they begin reality orientation. What's reality orientation? Well, reality orientation is a kind of treatment that helps a patient get reacquainted with the facts and circumstances of his or her life. Henrik has not actually lost his memory. It's just that his brain is injured in such a way that he can't access the place where the memories are stored. So how does he regain access to the storage place? Well, first, we do repetitive memory exercises to help Henrik relearn the basic facts, like his name and address, the name of his parakeet, if he has one, the date, and so on. Second, we try to stimulate Henrik's sensory memories in order to help trigger or find the way back to his cognitive memories. Where do I come in? You can't help Henrik remember his childhood, but you can probably help him remember his work, and who knows where that will take him. <laughs> All roads lead to Rome, as they say. One great tool is the Reality Orientation Board. This is a place to post information and pictures for the patient to look at over a period of time. You may want to bring in images or photos to place on the board. Things from the museum, perhaps. Is Henrik awake right now? Mm, not at the moment. We're keeping him under close observation. Close observation? What does that mean? Well, we wake him up every half hour to make sure he doesn't slip into a coma, and we watch for any signs that would indicate increased pressure in the brain. What kind of signs? Dilated or pinpoint pupils vomiting, severe headaches, and or seizures are some of the common symptoms that may indicate swelling in the brain. Anyway, once he's out of the danger zone, we'll move him over to neurology. Thanks for the crash course in head trauma, Nurse Bluefoot. Oh, sorry, no pun intended. Uh, when are visiting hours? Visiting hours are 10 to 4 every day. If the patient is not engaged in treatment and if he seems stable. Great. Uh, is there anything else? Just remember, Henrik's brain has been knocked around like a peanut in its shell. He may have attention difficulties, headaches, uh, anxiety. Sometimes he may seem giddy, too. We need to keep these conditions in check. Don't push him too hard. Or he may have some kind of meltdown. Thanks for the warning, Nurse Bluefoot. Be well.
You look familiar. Is it time for my snack? Hi, Henrik. I'm Nancy. We met at Beach Hill before your head injury. Beach Hill? Beach Hill is a museum here in Washington, D.C. Before your accident, you were working there on some important Maya glyph translations. Do you remember anything about that project? I don't even remember my own birthday. So if you're here to squeeze me for details, you're wasting your time. Actually, Nurse Bluefoot thinks with regular visits, I may be able to help you get your memory back more quickly. How, pray tell, do you intend to do that? I'll visit, we'll talk, sometimes I'll bring you pictures. Pictures? Well, isn't this nice? Come on, Henrik, you'll feel much better once things start coming back to you. I've got a picture with me if you'd like to give it a try. Fine, I'll do it. What should I post here? Great, these are Maya glyphs, like the ones you used to translate. Now, don't be upset if you don't know how to read them anymore. I can tell you what they mean. I know what they mean, dear. I wrote them. I'm sure you have written them at one time or another in your career. So what do you think this is all about? The magician suffers yellow death. Your translator is sloppy. I should know. I am the author of the original work. You don't agree with the translation? That first glyph is the fool, not the magician. Furthermore, any decent epigrapher knows those glyphs refer to the infamous plague of oozing hives. A fitting curse for a fool, don't you think? I rather like it. Henrik, this note was found at a crime scene. Are you telling me you left it there? I don't remember. I'm investigating the theft of the Pakal carving. Please, Henrik, try to remember something. Who in the world is Pakal? Oh, my head. Oh, the pressure. I can't take any more today, Nancy. Okay. It's time for some memory therapy. Nancy, could you come back tomorrow? Buenos dias. Have you heard? Henrik Vanderhoon fell off the pyramid at the museum. He's in the hospital with a mysterious head injury. That is terrible news. I hope it's not too serious. Do you know what cinnabar is? The red powder that the Maya used? Sure, I know it. They use it at Beach Hill too, do they not? Cinnabar was used to make the red handprint that was left at the scene of the Pakal theft. What is your point? I think Joanna may have been less than truthful with me. Have you called the police? I don't want to jump to conclusions. Of course. Sister Joanna couldn't possibly be a thief now, could she? I should get back to the museum. Adios, Nancy. Any news? I need a photo of the Pakal carving. Do you have one? Joanna took the official print for her insurance claim, but I have a couple extras. Here you go. Keep up the good work. Any news? There was an incident at the museum. Henrik is in the hospital with a head injury. Poor Henrik. Another squabble between him and Joanna, perhaps? Oh, I'm kidding, but I do remember the time she threatened to push him in the pond. Temper, temper, I'm always telling her. I'd better get going. Thanks for stopping by. Well, look who it is. Ready to do some memory work, Henrik? I brought you a picture. This will help you to remember. That face. He's as familiar as my own feet. Do you know his name? Pakal. Nancy, this is the stolen carving, isn't it? And I'm the one who took it. I must have. 
But why? Oh, Pakal, what could I have meant by this? Think, Henrik, where's the carving now? I can't remember. Easy, Henrik, the answers are in your head. You just need to find them. It's still in the museum. Are you sure, Henrik? Did you plan to sell the Pakal on the black market? To protect him. I had to protect him. Oh, Pakal! Something is going on at that museum, a devious plot. I was the only one who could stand in the way. Whose plot is this? Is it someone who's involved with the museum? Forgive me, Nancy, but when I woke up in this hospital bed, I didn't even know my own name. Perhaps the only thing I can offer you is this key. It was found in one of my pockets when I was brought in. Do you know what lock it belongs to? I haven't a clue. Take the key now, Nancy. Find out what it opens and return to me, please, with some answers. You can count on me, Henrik. In the meantime, I'll sit with my friend, Pakal, and see if he will tell me anything new. You must keep this to yourself for now. It's your only hope of getting to the bottom of this. Do you know anything about the theft of Prudence Rutherford's necklace? I can't remember. Did you use Joanna's name last week to place an order for Cinnabar with Keep It Real Restoration? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. Do you think Joanna is behind the other thefts? Who knows? You rest up. I'll be back. Be careful. Buenos dias. I should get back to the museum. Adios, Nancy.
Hi there, Nancy. Can you tell me what the password is to your disk? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. You rest up. I'll be back. Be careful. Any news? I'd better get going. Keep up the good work. Looks like this side is missing a part. It's locked.
It's locked. Hmm, looks like I need to find someone who speaks Nahuatl. are done giving me the third degree, but now the board has suspended me. To, to make a long story short, I'm forbidden to set foot in the museum. Could you please call Franklin Rose and try to reason with him? If we don't get a move on, this exhibit is going straight down the tubes. To replay messages, press zero. Press... Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, hello. Do you have any news? The thief left a red handprint at the scene of the crime. According to Taylor Sinclair, the same print was left at a couple of other crime scenes recently. I'm trying to find out what the connection is between these thefts. Oh, Nancy, you zero in on a case like a heat-seeking missile, don't you? I feel so much better knowing you're going to follow up on every lead. I'll help in any way I can. Thanks, Mr. Rose. That's what I'm here for. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, you must be psychic. I was just getting ready to call you myself. Oh, really? Why? I feel I should apologize for the situation that's going on at the museum, dear. I really did think we were setting you up with a nice little internship, a breather from your casework. But instead, it looks like we've fed you to the lions. Well, in all my travels, I still haven't found a mystery-free zone, Mr. Rose. Speaking of travel... I got a postcard from your father in Ouagadougou. Apparently, Burkina Faso has become the cultural darling of West Africa. He must be having quite an adventure. Like father, like daughter. Anyway, Mr. Rose, I'm calling about Joanna. I think I know what you're going to say, Nancy. Oh, let me be frank. Joanna Riggs has been in the doghouse with the board for months. Her thirst for acclaim has led her to gamble the future and the reputation of Beach Hill time and again. Now that we've lost the Pakal carving, one of our most notable pieces, well, 
She's just got to be stopped. Don't you believe she's genuinely concerned about the welfare of the museum? Good intentions are no substitute for integrity and sound judgment, Nancy. Look, I've got a client waiting, Nancy. What we need now is for you to take up the slack. I've spoken to the rest of the board, and we've agreed that the best thing is to put you in charge. What do you want me to do? We're counting on you to catch this thief red-handed. Ha <laughs> ha. Just kidding, kiddo. If you can get the Pakal back, we'll see about giving Ms. Riggs another chance. That seems fair, doesn't it? It's a deal, Mr. Rose. Bye, kiddo. Buenos dias. Have you heard? The police received an anonymous tip, and they're considering Joanna a prime suspect in the Bacall theft. They've taken her in for questioning. I called in that tip. She lied about the cinnabar, and you may not know this, but she has jeopardized the museum's finances with all of her wheeling and dealing. Why should she not be questioned? I need to know the Nahuatl word for snake. Can you help me? What do you need that word for? Uh, I'd rather not say. It's part of my investigation. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. I hear you have been a great help to Henrik. I wonder if you can help me improve my memory, too. What are you talking about, Alejandro? I am almost certain that the provenance documents for the Pakal carving were falsified. I have asked Joanna to see the documents, but she evades me. If you can find that file in her office and bring it to me, I think it might help my memory of Nahuatl a lot. It wouldn't be right for me to go behind Joanna's back like that. Is it right for Joanna to deny me access to these documents? And besides, I will return the file as soon as I have the information I need. What makes you think they were falsified? In Mexico, it is common knowledge that the carving was stolen from Pakal's tomb when it was first excavated. But no one has been able to prove it. If I can determine that the provenance documents are a fraud, this will be the first major step toward legal repatriation of the artwork, whenever and wherever it resurfaces. Okay, Alejandro. I'll see what I can do. I feel my Nahuatl coming back to me already. Do you know what Sihuapili means? Princess or lady. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. I should get back to the museum. Yes, you should. Hello, Nancy. You have a special delivery for me, I hope? Here's your file, as requested. I should hand over the paperwork. Good work, my friend. I suppose you would like something in return? A deal's a deal. The Nahuatl word for snake is coatl. C-O-A-T-L. Muchas gracias. Gotta go. Adios, Nancy.
It's locked. It's locked.
radio tube went out. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked.
it's locked. It's locked.
It's locked. Any news? I'd better get going. Bye now. What should I post here? Hello. I should get back to the museum. Goodbye.
Nancy, you have brought me back to my work. You recognize the riddle then? I've been working like a fiend. Look at the board. There's Henrik's password. This has something to do with the plot at the museum, Nancy. I'm sure of it. What is the prison of stone? It's a tomb. Pakal called it a prison because it was designed to prevent the Whisperer's soul from entering the underworld. That's kind of creepy. The Whisperer came from a distinguished line of royal scribes. I can't seem to remember her name. But I do recall that she wrote an account of Maya history that greatly angered Pakal because of the way it depicted his ascent to the throne. How did Pakal wish to be depicted? From the age of 12, when he came to the throne, Pakal claimed to be divinely appointed the first true authentic king of the Maya. Then the Whisperer came along and wrote that Pakal was only king because his mother pulled some strings. It was quite a blow to Pakal's image. So he put her in a stone prison? Pakal swore that the Whisperer's words would never see the light of day. He put her body, her soul, and her writings all in a tomb and locked it up tight. Wait, Henrik, a prison of stone? We're not talking about the monolith, are we? That's the idea. Does anyone else know about this? Good question. I'm certain that there's a dirty rat trying to get into that tomb. But this is where my memory fizzles out. If I could only figure out why I took the Pakal. Do you think there is anyone I can trust? Please don't breathe a word of this. There's too much at stake. Have you ever been part of a smuggling racket? I don't know. Henrik, I received a note from your friends in Copan. I've got the Copan fool key. I still need the Pakal, though. How's your memory? The tomb. Nancy, I hid the Pakal carving in the replica of the Pakal tomb at the bottom of the temple exhibit. Huh. Now, how did I think of that? And another thing. You'll need to get past that computer quiz. Sonny set it up with an impossible question. No one knows what Pakal was afraid of. But Sonny was petrified of the Coatamundi. It's an ornery bandit with a narrow snout and a long ring tail, much like a raccoon or a polecat. You rest up. I'll be back. I'll do my best.
Topeka Commission for the Arts. How cultured.